Hello, today we're going to be talking about SCCM 1910 update and some of the features and improvements that have been made for this um, update. So with that, we're going to get started. Some of the um, features uh, include the uh, Microsoft Endpoint Manager and extend and migrate on-prem site to Microsoft Azure, Desktop Analytics and Config Manager, run task sequence with high performance power plan, and I'll show you that. Uh, deploy Microsoft Edge version 77 and later using 1910. Uh, additional option for third-party updates, and I'll show you that. Now, some of these I'll do a separate video, BitLocker management capabilities in 2010, I mean 1910. And then some of the improvements that have been made, improvements in application groups, uh, task sequence search and copy-paste, set default keyboard layout and WinPE. Uh, import single index of an OS upgrade package. You could do that with 1906, but I think that's been improved in 1910. So some of these features were um, a new feature in 1906, but these are now improved in 1910. Uh, config manager console improvements. So we'll see that when we do the upgrade and software updates improvements. So we're going to take a look at that. So these are some of the things that we're going to look at today. And okay, so I'm going to bring up the console so we can uh, start the upgrade. So here we go. So we have the console open, 1910. Go ahead and install update pack. You go ahead and, uh, we're not going to ignore the prerequisites because we want that to run. So I want to make sure um, if there's any issues, I can just resolve them. So we're going to hit go next. And then at this point, you can uh, select any of the features that you want to have. We can kind of go over these features later, but this would be the opportunity here to add any additional features. Uh, like application groups and some other stuff. Uh, so we're going to go over that probably in a separate video. Uh, but here you can um, select all these different features. And so we're going to go over that later. So at this point, I'm just going to go next. Um, okay, so we're going to do, um, that's fine, upgrade without validating. Okay, we want to accept the terms. And next. Now this does take a little bit of time, but... Alrighty. Now it's going to go ahead and do the installing. So if you want to monitor this, you can go to monitoring. Update servicing status. You have to, it takes a few minutes to show up here. Um, you can also look at the log files and I'll show you that log file too. Go to config manager, open this up here open and then you go to the bottom it'll be at the root of where your installation um, log file will open and then you can just kind of watch you know those are the log files you want to look at you want to there's a prerequisite log that was there. Let me bring that up again so you can show you. Then there's a setup log, and it'll go through, and you can monitor it through the log file if you want. Um, it'll tell you everything that it's doing. And so it's just kind of expanding all of this stuff. So this will take some time. So I'm going to fast forward this to keep the video from becoming too long. And as you can see, it's now checking prerequisites. So we'll let that go through. checking the logs and just kind of doing the easy setup thing okay so that part's finished All right. now it's doing the prerequisite and we need to open up the other log system slow for some reason it's not normally this slow come on okay as you can see in the monitoring section it's telling you where it's at right now so it's kind of doing uh, replacing content That 
came up. <laughs> All right, so this came up, so you check the prereq log. This is the one. You can open that up and you can just monitor the uh, prerequisites. And uh, it's just kind of it's checking all the different things. At the end, it'll give you a, um, a, uh, if there's a warning or if there's any issues, it'll let you know at the end. But you can actually just watch this log file if you want. Um, so I'm going to um, let this finish and I'll be right back. Okay, when it's done, you'll see that this will pop up. A new version of the console is available, so click on that. And it will close the console and upgrade the console to the new version. There you go. And it's going to install the console now. <clears throat> and when you're done with the upgrade, you're going to need to upgrade your license, your, act, your, your agents, and then you're going to need to upgrade your um, boot image, as well as the ADK if, you, if you're going to be uh, uh, supporting any <clears throat> newer versions of Windows 10. Right now, I've got 18.03 installed, so I'm not moving to 19. <clears throat> I'm not moving to 19.06 at, at this point, so I'm going to leave that one alone. But I will need to install the upgrade the agents and update the boot image. And I'll show you that in a second. All right, it's finishing up. And when it finishes up, it should relaunch the console again. Sure is a long one second. <laughs> uh, there we go. And it's going to relaunch the console now. There it goes. All right, so we're going to look at the About Config Manager. And as you can see, 19.10 is installed. The site version is 89.13.1000. So we go over to... Sorry for the slowness today. I was not expecting this. So it is a little slow. Okay, so go to our administration. Uh, sites. It's Come on. Hierarchy settings. Client upgrade. And as you can see, the client version will be 89, 13, 10, 12. That's going to be the new client version. Now I have this setting set to upgrade all clients in the hierarchy in the next couple of days. Again, it's a lab environment, so just it's not thousands of machines. Uh, most organizations will have this set to seven days or 14 days, typically for 14 days. Um, you can either choose to not upgrade the servers or, you know, right now I've, I've got just up, update everything. Um, 
And you can also test the agent if you want to do a pre-production collection, if you want to just upgrade like a certain uh, select machines and test that out first and then up, uh, make it available to the production. Uh, so it's up to you. But um, so that's where those settings are. Um, and eventually over time, the agent, <coughs> the agent will be upgraded. Uh, I hope I'm not coming down with the cold. So over time, um, go to client version. As you can see right now, the client version is the old. So eventually, <clears throat> those will get updated. So now what I want to do is I want to go to the software library. And here's your boot images. And I want to go ahead and right click. So, um, so basically the clients will be upgraded to the uh, 1893 1006 once they get upgraded in a couple of days. Um, so I'm just going to let it do its thing. And in regards to the assisting client packages, um, you'll see that the packages are updated. So if you go to the software library and go to packages, You'll see that the um, package has been updated to like the client package. All right, so if you can see, I put the source date, you can see this was updated uh, automatically. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute um, this one update the distribution point so all that's all I gotta do is click on that and that'll be updated so this will eventually change uh, these two have already been upgraded but I need to upgrade the upgrade package so sometimes it does that one automatically sometimes not so I'm gonna go ahead and let that go and then you want to just make sure that the um, so that's what we did there and then of course your boot images will automatically update during the setup so um, uh, so that should be fine, but I would double ch check your boot images to make sure that they have the latest right now the client version is that so I can always update um, You know the uh, upgrade this and I push that out to the distribution points um, So what you do is you click on um, Let me show you that again cancel Sure, you go ahead and right click and go update uh, distribution points and it will know that it's been upgraded. Reload the boot image with the current. Um, so again, I didn't upgrade my um, ADK, so I'm gonna go ahead and upgrade so the client version is updated to the newer version. So we're just gonna go next, and it'll take a few minutes here, and then you wanna do that same thing for the 64-bit version. And then, of course, the updating of the client, um, or the other, um, as I mentioned, what you'd wanna do there. And that's basically it um, in terms of post stuff you need to do once you upgrade your SCTM environment to a newer version like we just did here with 1910. Um, so with that, I'm going to let that finish so you can see the process here. And then all you have to do is just check a few things, make sure everything is set to go and your monitor um, your agent deployments and monitor the deployment of the... Um, those packages for SCCM and uh, your boot images and stuff like that. So once that's all done, um, what I'm going to do is um, not this video, but I'd like to on the next video, I'd like to go over some of those other um, up features in more detail on the next video. So next week, we're going to go through all of the features in 1910, all of the things that are uh, the new features and the improved features. So we're going to go over that in the next video. But I wanted to kind of go over how to get your system, your config manager up to 1910 so that we can start looking at those features because there's a lot of good stuff. A um, lot of new features and a lot of improvements have been made, especially the endpoint manager um, and what things will look like in SCCM. So I'm going to play around with this for about a week. And um, again, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching and have a great day.